Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of RSA Commerce 2023. Four days of CUBE coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Got a great lineup here talking more cloud native. Hupal Bhatt, who's the CMO of Tigera. Welcome, Tigera, is that right? Tigera, Tigera, there yes. it is. I wonder what people call it another name, what they say? It's so, sometimes people call it Tigera, Tigera but okay. uh, it is Tigera. Just like the Tiger with an A. You guys are well known, love the logo. Check out the hat, great swag, appreciate that. I love black hats and I love good logos. That's, there you that's go. a winner. So we've been on the cloud native conversation around security. With Dave and I just posted a uh, two-part you know, identity crisis, kind of riffing on that. There isn't much a developer first kind of concept going on. We're seeing it in open source and in cloud native. And security, you have that same kind of feeling, but it, is it not yet clear to some of us, like in this world, like there's a transition happening in security. I want to get your thoughts on that. Um, what you think about this world and the security market, how, how tuned in are customers on cloud native security? Obviously software supply chain's huge. Right. You know, containers, yeah. moving from yeah. VMs, which that's trends happening. How tuned in on the security side are folks on cloud yeah. native? Yeah, you know, I think that's a great question. See, I think cloud native applications uh, have fundamentally changed uh, you know, how security gets done. And there are a lot of challenges that cloud native applications uh, bring to the table, which is what an organizations are realizing now. So you think about organizations moving into the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. The first way was do a lift and shift, but now they're recognizing that in order to get the economics right, they need yeah. to start developing cloud native technologies, which are highly distributed, yeah. ephemeral, transient, so all your standard security tools just really don't work in that environment because you, know, you have a really large attack surface. Also, coupled with that is all the CI CD automation, right? So now you have developers checking in code, yeah. merging it several times a day, pushing it into production, and all that is happening several times a day. So you don't have your usual controls applicable anymore. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the orchestrator like Kubernetes just deploying code all the time, right? Yeah. So you have a lot of different types of attack yeah. vectors now. You have attack yeah. vectors in your coding, CI CD pipeline, deployment, runtime, yeah. and I think that's what organizations are realizing that hey, this is fundamentally a different kind yeah. of architecture and we need to look at it differently. Yeah, you know, I think that's so right on because two things, one, yes, it's happening, and people are kind of in denial on one camp. The other one, other side of the camp's like, oh yeah, this is happening. It seems messier than it really is. We just had Merit Bear on from Amazon. She said, zero trust. My water bottle, zero trust. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Like, yeah. things have to work together. So she was, I mean, she was kind of making a, a play on, on zero trust. I mean, I don't think she's against it, but the point is, that's just not always the answer. So the systems have to just work. Right. You got microservices coming on the thing, you got containers, security's got to get better, but sometimes you got to just keep moving. That was her position. That's very cloud native mindset, very systems thinking. Right. Right. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, so you know, I think that uh, it is absolutely, because it's no longer a discrete process, you know, it's a continuum, mm -hmm. all the way from development of code to deployment, and it's a loop, right? If you see some of the CNAP pictures, it's actually an infinity loop, right? So you start off from planning all the way to coding, deployment, and you come back in from all the runtime uh, signals that you're, you're, you're tracking and then you're bringing that mm -hmm. intelligence back into your development. So it is, it is truly a continuum and that's what we are seeing, right? Because and that's where when you see, I think organizations are trying, I mean they're realizing that it's more of a continuum today than ever before because earlier it was all about shift left. Yeah. You know, let's fix everything yeah. in the code and we'll never have to worry about runtime. That we're already yeah. established is a flawed thinking, right? Yeah. Because despite everything that you could possibly do at runtime, at mm -hmm. in coding, you will end yeah. up having vulnerabilities, you will end up having yeah. zero day attacks at runtime, and you have to block and yeah. protect your applications there, right? So it is a continuum, and I think organizations are I mean, the zero day attack that. is actually the really good example, because you, how do you detect for that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you can't scan for that. Yeah, right? and that's, you know, I think that's, that's, a great, that's a great question. I mean, example, right? Zero day attacks, by definition, it's unknown, right? So you have to piece together different types of signals, right? And so, you know, now there are technologies like the EBPF probes that uh, you know Tigera has developed that look straight into the kernel, grab all yeah. the information about processes, about file IOs, network data, piece together, 
hey, is this, does this look right? And you know, you kind of do a time series analysis. Let's, let's jump into that. You mentioned yeah. if you're going into the kernel. Obviously, a big hot area in KubeCon. Kernel, kernel programmability is a big one. Linux kernel, and other areas. But the cloud for this for this conference, if I have a cloud native application, and I'm a CISO. Yeah. I got to secure it. Yeah. Job one. Yeah. That's what you guys do, yeah. right? So yeah. Take us through the solution. Where you guys are winning. What you guys do. What your need problems that you solve. The needs that you're addressing with customers, and and, and how does that turn into value? Yeah. Absolutely. So you know when we look at cloud native applications, we talked about the attack surface. Yeah. We talked about you know the the entire continuum of of things that we have to uh, develop. You know, what we saw is that the first generation of CNAP platforms, they had a very detection-centric approach. Yeah. And a detection-centric approach is that, hey, let's detect everything. Detect vulnerabilities, detect uh, misconfigurations, detect any indicators of attacks and compromises. And so, what happens then? You have a long list <laughs> of things for developers to fix, yeah. right? And so, all of a sudden, security has now become a business inhibitor instead of yeah. an enabler. So, Tigera has fundamentally a very, very different approach what we believe is that you have to balance prevention and risk mitigation with detection. So instead of focusing on detection alone, how about we start with prevention? Let's reduce the mm -hmm. attack surface. And the way we do that is we provide uh, micro-segmentation, for example, workload isolation yeah. off the bat, egress mm -hmm. controls, integration with your firewalls, making sure that we have vulnerability management so nothing moves into production if it has any vulnerabilities. So that kind of limits almost 40% of the attacks from happening. Then- oh, Just on the prevention side. That's what I'm saying, yeah, on the, yeah, just yeah. on the prevention side, yeah. because now you've prevented- I was like at the complexity side on the other side too. So yeah, you got <laughs> exactly. And then what we have, you know, we have developed uh, runtime protection controls like uh, workload-based IDS IPS that you know, we ingest thread feeds about malicious IPs and domain names and uh, VPN tours, and what we do is we block any type of communications to these malicious IPs. We have also developed a workload-centric WAF, which means that any attacks that are in the HTTP uh, layer, and any OWASP, OWASP mm -hmm. 10, top 10 attacks, we block against them as well. So now what you've done is again, step two, you know, first was just better posture management, step two was runtime, protection controls from known threats, now you've almost eliminated 50% mm -hmm. of the threats reaching your environment. And then what we do is the third piece is threat detection. And what we do is we combine both container-based threat detection with network-based threat detection. So you know, you're looking at any indicators of yeah. attacks, both at the container level, as well as the network level. Which ones are the most common right now? Is it, con is it the container threat vector? Is it, or is it the network? What do you, I mean, obviously network might seem obvious, but I've been hearing a lot of container yeah. challenges. Yeah, you know, I, I like think that, see the, I would say both are equally important. And uh, I don't think, it depends on the organization. You know, if they have lots of misconfiguration in their CI CD pipeline, they have a lot of uh, misconfigurations in their orchestrator, you will find malicious containers entering into your environment, right? Yeah. And uh, if you have uh, an open network where you haven't really done egress or micro-segmentation, you will have a lot of malware coming into your environment through the network, right? So I think yeah, yeah. it de really depends upon, upon how you uh, uh, um, kind of configure your application. Let's yeah. get into the operations side, because bring, that brings up a good point. If I'm the operator, I want to have that holistic approach. I want to see, understand where everything is, so do I even know how much micro-segmentation I need to do? Or, what, how do you guys make the operations better? I mean, yeah. take me through that it's piece, because that's complexity, too many knobs to turn, yeah. you know, yeah. list of things to go through. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a really great point, because, see, I think what we have done is, uh, with, especially with cloud-native applications, by just this rapid innovation, the one thing we've forgotten is that, have we made it simple to operate? And the answer is categorically no, right? If you think about the biggest challenges that security teams will talk about is that, hey, I'm getting a lot of false positives. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have a lot of these things to configure. I have a lot of rule sets to maintain. And if you're using rule sets that you have to code and you know test to see if you're capturing yeah. all the right types. So, so in effect, what we've done is by providing a tool with hundreds and thousands of knobs, you're just making the life of the security person so 
difficult. And so the environment has to be simple to operate. So one of the things that we have done at Tigera is that the platform that we have, our Calico Cloud and Calico Enterprise platforms, they are extremely simple to operate. They are, we call them plug and play security. Mm -hmm. And plug and play security means that out of the box, we have capabilities that automatically secure your posture with micro-segmentation, egress controls, integration with firewalls, setting up your workload-based IDS IPS or WAF, you know, setting up container-based threat detection, so mm -hmm. we have about, you know, we provide out-of-the-box detectors. So what that means is that a lot of the things that was originally required for the security team to do and, and mandate, I mean, mandate, it's all taken care of out of the box. And I think that what is what we believe uh, the industry needs today. For the folks watching here at RSA, what's the value proposition for the for you guys? How do you guys sell the premium and then premium version? How do the cons is it consumed? What's yeah. the growth plan? How do people buy into it? What problems do you hit right out of the gate? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. So we have uh, two different product lines. Well, we have three. The first is uh, Calco Open Source. If you're looking for container networking and, and uh, container uh, network security, then Calico Open Source is sufficient for you. Uh, if you're looking at, then we have Calico Cloud. If you're, that is our container security solution, which is end-to-end, -end, all the way from uh, image scanning to KSPM, security configuration management, compliance, uh, runtime protection, threat defense, and yeah. observability. It's the whole just gamut. If I inject one second, explain why scanning isn't good enough. This has become up a lot. Yeah, Scanning yeah. is in that container piece. Yes, it's yeah. It's end to end super valuable, explain why. Yeah, so the question is, you know, why is scanning not good enough? Well, scanning's not good enough because not everything is going to make into your environment through yeah. the image, right? So if you are just scanning, right, and uh, if you, do not look for misconfigurations. If you do not look for zero day attacks, if you do not detect any network or container based uh, threat vectors, then even though you have the best scanning solution and you're doing <laughs> everything right, you are leaving the door open in six other areas, right? Yeah. So that's your scanning just is one threat vector and yeah. it's just not enough. All right, so the th you got the open source, you got the uh, Calico, uh, Calico Cloud. Cloud. And Calico Cloud is, is, you know, you can start up, you have a free trial, you can go sign up for Calico Cloud. It's a, uh, within 10, 15 minutes, you can deploy it on your clusters and you're up and running. And then for organizations that are not yet ready for a cloud-based service, we have a self-managed platform, we call it Calico Enterprise, and you can get some of the same capabilities. For on-premises? Uh, uh, well, you can deploy it in your own cloud, but it's self-managed. Got it, okay, got yeah. it. So, so for teams that are going to be self-sufficient? Correct. If you have a large engineering organization or a large DevOps team, platform teams, and you want to manage your own infrastructure, uh, and you want to run it yourself, then Calico Enterprise is for you. And your pitch basically is, if you're going to run Kubernetes and these clusters for microservices, for cloud native applications, you guys are the solution for... Absolutely, we are, we are your absolutely essential comp companion if you're running cloud native applications. And if you're running on containers and Kubernetes, it's our one-stop shop to secure yeah. everything all the way from your build artifacts to your orchestrator to your runtime, we give you complete visibility and most importantly, yeah. We provide you with risk mitigation controls. You know, we didn't talk about risk mitigation. See, oftentimes what happens yeah. is that when a breach happens, it's not that you're going to be able to fix things immediately. Mean yeah. and, and and you don't have imagine a retail application. You don't have the luxury of shutting down your site. That's your entire business. Yeah. So what do you do? How do you build a moat around your you get vulnerable quarantine, workloads? Do some things, right? You got to figure it out. Exactly. And so what we provide is is risk mitigation that gives your developers a little bit more runway to go and fix it while we have kind of quarantined the infected areas, we have hardened the security policies. That must policies. be a huge product right there. That's the number one thing people want, probably. Uh, absolutely. Right? <laughs> there's, there's, I mean, <laughs> give you an example, Log4j, when, when that happened, right? Our customers, we were able to deploy policy recommendations immediately when yeah. that happened, and they were able to secure their Log4j yeah. container was, uh, or workloads Yep. And uh, that gave their developer teams a lot of runway to go and fix it. I think that's super yeah. important. And also this, uh, the new, you know, the double supply chain hacks you're seeing. We reported, Krebs reported, we reported it this week. You know, the voice over IP app, they get in, then they move horizontally. Next thing you know, they're standing up. Fake LinkedIn and Drowns working in 
job descriptions for some spear phishing. Yeah. Really well orchestrated hacks. Yeah. Yeah. Inside the network, you guys can and, see that. And and you know what? The, the, it's great you bring it up because see in Kubernetes, the traffic inside the cluster is not secured by default, which means that you know you have these hundred doors through which you can enter, but once you're in in the system, you can move around laterally very freely. Yes. And yeah, that's where that's dangerous. things like micro-segmentation and you know, stopping east-west you know, traffic is what we do really well that And that's it. the dangerous part, right? That's hard, that's the, that's the problem. So let, let me get your comments on the customer, because I've been hearing this a lot from this market with Kubernetes, folks like you guys come in. It's not so much that the development teams can't handle it. I mean, they, they're going to use your product. Right. Maybe the cloud might help them, depending on where their team is at from a skill set and or activity standpoint. Right. A lot of folks are overloaded, they want to do more work. Right. They want to lean on a partner yeah. to handle it. This is where I think you guys come in. Is that correct? Is that, am I getting that right? Yeah, so you know, I think the... Where, where do you fit into that scenario where I am? I can't grow my team fast enough. Yeah. I need so, to be operationally secure and, and smooth. Yeah, so the way we, I mean, the way we fit in there is that we provide a simple to operate plug and play solution that pretty much addresses all your security needs when it comes, comes to containers and Kubernetes, right? So. If you have a small team that is, uh, you know, has 100 different things to worry about, the amount of time it takes to operate a system like ours, you know, we give you a prioritized list of things to fix. We give you, you know, very, uh, I mean, eliminate false alerts. You know, we give you controls that save your environment from getting attacked in the first place, right? So all these things are meant to give you back time of the day, in, you know. So uh, you guys manage this new growth area, mi mitigate these surface area issues, run Kubernetes, identify runtime de threat detections, and then really mitigate risk through easy to operate platform. Absolutely, I think you nailed it. No, I think essentially combining prevention and risk mitigation along with stellar detection is what we do. Of course, you make it easy for the developers, I'm sure, right? Absolutely. No, one make, <laughs> no, we make it hard. Our job is to make it hard. No, yeah. I mean, this, is, this is huge in the, in the cloud native world. We've been calling it B to D, business to developer. Developers are the consumers now. They right. like the product. Right. It will grow. Right. It's not about the vendor pushing it. It's yeah. about the customers and open source. This is now a big power dynamic well, inside companies. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, our target audience ends up being, uh, there are three personas that form the buying committee. You know, there's of course the security persona, and that usually has the budget. But then it's the DevOps, or in some cases it's the DevSecOps, yeah. Yeah. and then there's a platform team that's managing the entire Kubernetes infrastructure, yeah. right? So these three personas are very important. It's interesting, you know, what's, what I've noticed the trend in the cloud native world is with security is, and Merit Bear summed it up beautifully, but well, I loved her Marvel examples, like many, many superheroes of different, different types guarding against the bad guys. But in security and cloud, they, they want to be the department of yes, not no. And so they might have the budget to buy the security solution for Kubernetes and cloud native, but the developers are ultimately the ones that have to put it in place. I see, I think that, that's, uh, you know, you're so right in this, because the security teams know what needs to be secured. And in order to be compliant, you know, what are the controls that need to be put in place? That's all the information for the security team. But the security team doesn't have the expertise to run Kubernetes. They don't have the expertise to run containers, right? Or the CI CD pipeline. And that's where you need to have very close collaboration with your DevOps and DevSecOps and platform teams, right? Uptal, great to have you on. Tagera on theCUBE here. Cloud native security will be the force that was going to drive a lot of the change in Kubernetes and containers and security. Thanks for coming on. The Cube. Thank you very much. Okay, it's here in the CUBE live, RSA conference coverage. Back with more after this short break. Stay with us here on the floor, live for four days. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>